Good morning, everyone. We'll call the January 6, 2015 meeting of the Jackson City Council to order. And uh, if you would, please rise. We'll ask Councilman Rahm to lead us in an invocation and pledge. Pray with me. As we stand before you today, we acknowledge what a wonderful Savior we have. We lift you up with praise and give thanks for everything that you have provided us. I give you thanks for the men and women that each and every day work to make Jackson a better place to live and to raise our families. I lift up the individuals that are serving in our military for the freedoms that we have. I pray that the actions of this body today will be those that are pleasing unto you as we continue to seek your face daily. And it's in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus, that I pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Is there anyone in the audience who needs to be recognized? All of you are recognized, but... I noticed uh, a board member and Miss Dinah from the library is here. Uh, anyone else that we need to recognize? Very good. Um, Nita, I think you can show on the roll call that we have everyone present. Adam Forwards, approval of the minutes of the December 2nd, 2014 City Council meeting. Uh, council members received a copy of those minutes. If there are any additional <coughs> corrections, uh, please let me know if otherwise. <coughs> Otherwise, we'll go ahead and accept those as submitted. Uh, item five is the invitation for public comment. If there's anyone present who would like to be heard on any item under new business, if you would let me know at the time, we'll be happy to call on you and let you come up. We have no proclamations <clears throat> this morning. We have no um, first readings on any ordinances. We'll go to second readings, item eight. It's consideration of the ordinance to accept Tennessee Department of Transportation project. See the numbers there, a Keith Short Bypass from I-40 to Old Hickory Boulevard. Uh, Council's passed that on first reading. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. There's a motion, a second. Discussion? Council, please vote. Okay. And the vote is unanimous. Also under second reading, we have a consideration of the ordinance to rezone property located on the west side of U.S. Highway 45 bypass, just south of Airways Boulevard, from uh, AOFH, Agriculture Open Land Flood Hazard District, to B5FH, Highway Business Flood, Flood Hazard District, containing 4.5 acres, more or less, submitted by Lyle Brothers. Council has passed that ordinance on first reading. Move for approval. Second. second. Motion. Second. Discussion. Council, please vote. And the vote is unanimous. Item three is consideration for the ordinance to barricade and close Cedar Street to through traffic submitted by Asphalt Recovery Center. Council's passed that on first reading. Is there a motion? Move for approval. A motion for second. approval. There's second. Discussion from council. Council, please vote. <clears throat> Okay, under uh, new business, um, item nine, we have an overview of ATA, the FY14 City of Jackson financial audit uh, presented by uh, members of the auditing firm. If y'all come up. I think we have John and Mr. Mike here. Good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. morning. Mm -hmm. Appreciate y'all putting us so early on your agenda this morning. Uh, we're, uh, my name is Mike Hewitt. I'm with Alexander Thompson Arnold. He's one of my partners, John Wybrew. And we're going to give you a uh, brief summary and overview of the audit for the fiscal year end of June 30, 2014. It's a quite large document. I realize that. Uh, I don't know if you all have had time to review it thoroughly. If, uh, if any questions come up after today, we're just a phone call away. We'll be happy to come down here and meet with you to 
discuss anything, any questions you might have that you don't have today. Okay. So that everybody can see this, if I can uh, use both hands here and not get confused, I'll try to put on the screen what we're, what I'm talking about. So you, you can have it to look at. Okay, if you'll go to page 10, or page 9, excuse me, in the audit report. Uh, this is our actual report on the financial statements. Uh, there's a, sl a slight change in wording this year. Uh, our profession has taken what used to be a page and a half uh, document and now made it two and a half pages. Uh, I guess more is better. Uh, I know we added a few things to it. Uh, primarily what I wanted to bring your attention to is this paragraph right here labeled management's responsibility for the financial statements. Uh, quite often as we're delivering audit reports, uh, somebody will make a reference to ATA's financial statements, and uh, and that's not isolated just to our accounting firm. Uh, that was a widespread misconception that just because we assist in drafting the financial statements, they're somehow ours. Uh, so the uh, CPA profession decided we wanted to make sure that everybody understood whose financial statements they were. So we added this paragraph in here called management's responsibility for financial statements. And essentially what it says is you as management uh, of, the, uh, of the city of Jackson are primarily responsible for produ producing the financial statements. Okay, then the next couple of paragraphs talk about what our responsibility is. Uh, probably what everybody's most interested in is on the next page, on page 10, this section here that says opinion. Uh, and that's a fairly long uh, sentence there, uh, but in, in essence what it says is these financial statements are a fair representation of the financial condition and the results of operations of the city of Jackson for the fiscal year ended June 30, 2014. Okay, if you will flip over to page 12. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about all of this. This section is called management's discussion and analysis. Uh, this is sort of a plain language narrative of the 100 plus pages that's behind that. Uh, if reading tabular uh, financial statements is confusing for you, this might be a better place to look for to get the highlights of the financial statements. Uh, one <coughs> page I will address uh, or point you to, just for your information, is page 18 of that section. Uh, and this is prepared by you all. It's part of the financial statements and we assist you in drafting a lot, a lot of the other financial statements. Uh, this section, the management discussion and analysis is written by your uh, finance staff. Uh, page 18 addresses some of the major variances in revenues and expenditures from both the previous year as well as from your budget. Uh, it's uh, good information. Okay, if you go to page 20. I'll give you a little explanation of what's on this page. The, uh, it's a little bit confusing. There's several columns there. The last two columns are uh, Jackson Energy Authority and the Jackson Community Redevelopment Agency, which are not legally a part of the city of Jackson, but because of their various relationships that you all have with them, they're considered component units, and therefore they're, they're required to be a part of your financial statements. Uh, the first two columns encompass the majority of what you all directly oversee. Uh, the first column there, governmental activities, is, is basically all your governmental funds uh, general debt service, solid waste, capital outlay, and, and several other smaller funds. Uh, the second column, which is business type activities, comprises uh, your landfill activities. Uh, Jackson Transit Authority is included in that. A, uh, the Sportsplex Fund, as well as the, uh, your revolving loan funds that uh, are issued by the Community Development Department. 
Uh, in this financial statement, the statement in that position is on the full accrual basis. It includes all of your assets, including all of your uh, capital assets and infrastructure. The uh, total assets uh, of the city are 200 and just just under $207 million. Uh, if you look down at the bottom, say, inch of the uh, two columns there of assets, you'll notice that's where the majority of the dollars are. Those are the capital assets of the city. And the governmental activities alone, that comprises about $128 million. So that's where the majority uh, of your assets are. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, because it's, it's a quirk in the financial statements it's caused by state law. There's nothing we can do about it or nothing you can do about it. If you look up in the first column under taxes receivable, you'll notice a number of over $32 million. Now you all can sit there and you scratch your head and say who in the world owed us $32 million in taxes at June 30th, 2014? Well, the, actually about 30 million of that number are the taxes that you're going to collect in the 2014-15 uh, fiscal year. Uh, there's an offset for that. If you'll flip over on the next page, on page 21, you see right in the middle of the page a uh, line captioned unavailable property taxes of $30 million. Uh, that's what that is. And I usually explain that because it you know, if somebody reads these, they'll scratch their head and say, nobody owed us that much money. And what this is, this is, like I said, a quirk of state law. The actual levy attaches to the property on January the 1st. Even though you all have not decided what the tax rate for the next year is, it, the attachment to the property occurs on January the 1st, six months before the fiscal year opens. Uh, I wish the state would fix that, but I think it's in the Constitution, so there's not much probably they can do about it. Mike, those are the yes. taxes that aren't due until December? Yeah. Okay. The ones you all just got done collecting and are collecting now. And it's it's terribly confusing that it's reported on your in, uh, financial statement, you know, before uh, the budget year that they actually apply to, but that's, uh, like I said, there's nothing we can do about that. Uh, but I, that's why I do explain that, because it's uh, if you don't get an explanation for it, you'll, uh, most people wonder who in the world owes us that much money. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you'll flip if, down at the page, bottom of page 21. Uh, if you look at the net position, this is the net worth, so to speak, of the city. The governmental activities is 70, 79 million dollars, and the business type activities is 11 million dollars. Now again, that uh, that sounds like a big number. If you'll go up a couple of inches to the first line in that net position section, you'll see that most of that is invested in your capital assets. And what that net investment in capital assets is, that's your capital assets minus any related debt, if you issue debt to buy those assets. So, so really, that's not available for the operations of the city. I mean, it's it's an investment you have in, in capital assets, but you know you can't go out and buy anything with it. Uh, so everything below that represents resources that are available to be spent by the city. Okay, if you go to page 23. Okay, this is the what you're more used to seeing every month. It's in a summarized format, but uh, this is on the fund basis of accounting. Uh, it's, it does not have the capital assets in it. it the uh, debt is not reported. Long-term debt is not reported as a liability. Like I said, this is what you're used to seeing every month. Uh, uh, just zero in on the general fund. General fund had $50 million roughly in assets uh, and a total fund balance of just under $21 million. And you'll see there uh, various categories of fund balance. These represent restrictions and designations that you all, uh, restrictions generally come from outside sources. Uh, you don't have much control over those. 
uh, designations and assignments represent things that, where you have decided you're going to spend some money. And the last line item down there, unassigned fund balances, essentially your fund balance has not been restricted or designated uh, in any way by management. And that's, just, like I said, just under $21 million for the uh, general fund. Okay, if you go to page 25. Okay, uh, again, this is similar to what you see every month. It's, it's consolidated quite a bit from what you normally see. Uh, revenues and expenditures for the governmental funds. Uh, the general fund total revenues were 61, just over $61 million and expenditures of $64 million for a uh, deficiency of revenues under expenditures of $2.9 million. And then the section below that reflects the sale of long-term debt as well as transfers. Uh, one comment I want to make on the transfers, if you'll look over in the solid waste column, you'll notice a uh, nearly $2.2 million transfer from solid waste, and that all came to the, most of that came to the general fund. Uh, just want to give you all a heads up the, uh, on this. The, you all had this transfer in budgeted, and the state decided uh, right about the time you approved this budget uh, they pulled a, a law that, again, one of these laws have been on the books that nobody knew about out of their hat that basically said solid waste <coughs> funds are restricted to the management of solid waste. Uh, you all in the past had had, had a, uh, a uh, pattern of transferring some of that money to the general fund. Uh, you, at the time, the state uh, published that, which was about 18 months ago, I guess, you all had already approved the budget for this year that included the transfers to the general fund. Uh, we discussed this with Al uh, and your finance staff and also I believe with the mayor. Uh, we can't give you any assurance that the comptroller won't complain about this transfer. Uh, they did approve your budget that had the transfer in it. Uh, I think your management's view is the state approved the budget. We, should, we clearly showed the transfer from the solid waste fund to the general fund so we're going to stick with that. Uh, and and I, uh, we agree with that, but again, I, I, we can't give you any assurance when the state reviews this that they won't raise the issue of whether or not that transfer should have been made. Uh, we think you have a pretty good argument or explanation if they do question that. And it's my understanding that there is a plan going forward to transfer some of the overhead in the general fund to the solid waste operation that probably is legitimate overhead of, the man of managing solid waste, which should take care of this issue going forward. Okay, if you'll look at page 29. Uh, this is a statement of revenues and expenses of your uh, business type activities. Like I said, the uh, uh, landfill, the Transit Authority, which you all, while legally it's part of the city of Jackson, you all don't really directly oversee that. Uh, the Sportsplex and the Community Development Revolving Loan Fund. The only thing I wanted to draw your attention to here on, is on the Sportsplex. Uh, there have been some revenues that have been reclassified. Uh, uh, your finance staff uh, raised this question and they, they were correct to raise the question. The hotel and motel tax and the sales tax comes with restrictions that it has to be used for debt service. Uh, and based on that, since it's revenue that comes in, but it's restricted only to paying debt service, it's not really an operating revenue it's, as it's been reflected in the past. So if you look down under the non-operating revenues, you'll see those tax sources of 461 million and 657,000. Uh, in the past years, those have been up under operating revenues. And it's uh, just wanted to bring, in case any of you go back and compare this to the last year's financial statement, just wanted to bring that change to your attention. Okay. Uh, if you'll go over to page 90. 
the, uh, this section from 90 through 93. Uh, let me put up the last page here. It is a summary of all of the federal grant expenditures that you, the city of Jackson had in the year end of June 30, 2014. Uh, and when I make the presentations, I usually like to, if there's been a lot of federal funding, I usually like to bring this to everyone's attention uh, so that mainly you understand what your dependence on the federal government is. On page 93, if you look down at the bottom there, the total federal awards expended uh, for the June 30, 2014 year is ju just over $4.1 million, which is not an insignificant number. It's, uh, and I, I like to point that out now more than ever, given the, uh, uh, you know, who knows what the future of the federal budget is and, and what somebody up there might cut. Okay, with that, uh, that's all the comments I've got about the actual financial statements. I'm going to turn it over to John and let him talk about our internal control findings. If you'll flip over to page 106, this is our auditor's report on internal control over financial reporting and on compliance. Uh, this is basically where we we go over the findings and look at internal controls throughout the city and make recommendations as we see them. If you look down at the third paragraph, um, we like to point out that, you know, down towards the bottom, that this isn't for the purpose of expressing an opinion on the effectiveness of the city's internal controls. Basically, we just bring up problems as we come across them. We do some specific testing looking at areas, but we don't look at everything across the board. Um, if you'll go to the next page, 107, and look at the very first paragraph, we did have two findings this year. One is a carryover from last year and then one new finding that we thought needed to be brought up and merited uh, being included as findings this year. If you flip over to page 111, this is the actual <coughs> findings. The 2013-001 finding is the same finding as last year. The numbers have changed and the funds have changed, but basically it's for exceeding budgeted expenditures in several departments, several funds. Um, part of this was related to the transfers in the solid waste was increased above budget. But we just recommend that all expenditures be, including those transfers, be authorized in the city's budget in the future. And then any needed budget amendments be made by June 30th. The state's looking at budget amendments a lot more now and making recommendations and kind of pushing that those are done prior to year end rather than after year end. So we've talked with the finance staff and uh, pretty much have that settled. The second finding is a new one. When testing some of the grant reimbursements in the planning department, there were a couple issues where duplicate payroll was used to reimbursement for reimbursement from two different grants. And what happened was a new person took over the reimbursements this year and was using the same day's time to apply for reimbursement for the grants. When we looked into it, there was plenty of excess time for those people. It was just, it wasn't coded specifically on the reimbursement request. Mm -hmm. So we've talked to them and they've made changes in the way they're doing it. And we feel like that shouldn't be an issue going forward. Page 113 is the prior year findings. And this just shows that this is a carryover finding. This shows the numbers that were included last year. Um, so you can look at where the issues were last year and where they were this year to make changes in the budgeting process going forward. 114 It's the corrective action plan. This is where we send the finding to city personnel and then they give us, we give them a recommendation and they give us the response. And as you can see um, on the budgeted finding that we've recommended that you just get all the amendments done prior to year end and those will be brought to council and that should be taken care of. Same with the payroll. When we addressed that, that was changed basically that day. So that was fixed going forward and shouldn't be an issue going forward. 
those were the only findings for the city this year. We did have one management letter comment, which we wanted to go over, and it's it's a, the same management letter comment we had last year. Basically, on some of the grants inside of Jackson Community Development, they require monitoring of the subrecipients of the money, and that's not always being done. So, you know, we just want to bring that to your attention that they need to monitor those subrecipients, make sure that they're spending the money in compliance with the grant documents as if the city was spending the money themselves. That's all the findings, recommendations, and uh, management letter comments we had. Do y'all have any questions for us? On the, uh, the over budget, did, did we approve those expenditures, just didn't do them by June the 30th? Did we do it in the following year? I thought we did all the Okay, but that, that was my question is yeah. we did we did approve those we just didn't do it before june 30th well, in this case i'll be honest with you we didn't come back because we had gone we approved for 815. okay so we, we didn't actually know that The, uh, the state is, is kind of on a on the war path about approving budget amendments after year end. Uh, they just don't they don't like it. They don't want any governments doing it. Uh, it's been a common practice across the state for decades, and they're determined to make sure that it gets stopped. Uh, their view is once you pass June thirtieth, you've already spent the money. What what point is uh, after the fact budget amendment? But, but the, uh, my, the best we could do, though, is, is try to estimate. Yes. <clears throat> and, yeah. and it, well, there's no way to. We, we don't know as far as catastrophic event, all the overtime that would be involved. I mean, it's just a shot in the dark. But I understand, I understand what the state's after. Uh, the, in 35 years of doing this, uh, you know, budget, budgets sometimes get overrun. Uh, theoretically, it's not legal. Uh, but, you know, as long as there's explanations for it, I've never seen any city government ever get in trouble because they spent more uh, like on a disaster. Yeah. That, you know, sometimes you don't know what those bills are until they come <clears throat> in. Okay, any other, any other questions from council as to the audit report? On the grants that uh, you mentioned might not have been monitored uh, as closely as we should have, were those uh, specific grants, were all the grants in general, um, was it a particular department or? No, it's specific to the grants that go through Jackson Community Development. There's some grants where I think some of the money may go to, to the- It's non-profits, mainly yeah, the non CDGB non funding, isn't the, it? The Boys oh, Club, for example. Yeah. <coughs> there's, just, there's some requirements in there that they have to provide you with documentation on how they spent the money so that you can see that they've spent it in accordance with the way the grant was originated. But we need somebody from the city to actually monitor to make sure that the community development is doing that. That's what it boils down to. Or somebody, I mean, the grants are going to community development. They're usually responsible for the expenditures over there. Somebody there could do it as long yes. as we're making sure it gets done. Yep. As long as yep. we get copies of the reports. You, you could ask for those. Uh, this has been done in the past. It's uh, I think just the last couple of years it's not been followed through on. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, sir. Good morning to you all. In your general overall view, do you feel like that our internal control is, is doing a great job with respect to city's taxpayers' money? That's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
if we had, uh, uh, we're obligated if we feel like there are material weaknesses in your controls uh, on the expenditure of the funds on any, in anything, collection of the money, uh, we're obligated to point those out. Now, we can't give you 100% assurance that we, we have, because if we checked everything, every mm -hmm. control you had, you wouldn't want to pay the bill. I'd love to send a bill, but you guys wouldn't want to pay it. Yeah, I, I think they're doing a pretty good job, and I, I just want to hear from the professionals. Now, with respect to CDBG money, uh, CDBG is under the city of Jackson. Is that not correct, Mayor Gears? Yeah. yeah. And yes. we're, we're supposed to, they can, they can handle that. Right. I saw you found, they had that as a fine. Yeah, you all contract with the Housing Authority to operate the CDBG program for you, but it still is your money. They're just contract administrators. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, any other, any other questions or comments? Um, how do we formally accept the audit, or what's the process here? Do we normally accept it by vote, or are we okay with it? We do. Move to accept the audit. Okay, we have a motion to accept the audit as presented and a second. Any additional discussion by council? Council, please vote. And the vote is unanimous. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, item two under new business will be consideration of the contract for the engineering design and right of way construction engineering inspection for the Highland Avenue. Multimodal project, and I mean the sidewalks from basically Skyline to Parkway. Back last month, I brought to you a recommendation for award of this contract to A2H, and it was not passed. So the mayor assigned three council members, uh, Council Member Bray, Cisco, and Conger to meet with city staff and go over the reasons why we made our recommendation to you the way we did. We met and uh, we explained to them that this was a qualification-based selection and where price is not a factor in the evaluation and selection process and that is in accordance with the laws of the state of Tennessee because they gave us this money to use on this project so we have to go along with what they say if we're using their money. And council member Cisco moved that the committee go with the staff's recommendation and award to A2H and it was seconded by council uh, member Conger. And I'm back before you today with the same recommendation that we award this to A2H. Is there a motion? Move the approval. Have Second. A motion. Question Second. on the motion. Also, is there not a stipulation about future contracts? Uh, this was only if we use state and federal funds. No, no, with respect to council members. Oh, thank you. Uh, Councilman Conger asked that he be on all the future uh, boards when we have um, state and federal money to spend. And if anyone else would like to join him, that would be super. We have maybe one or two a year. Yeah, that's what I, I thought that was rare. Yeah, it's very rare. I think that should be appointed by the mayor mm -hmm. as far as to whatever he sees fit. Yeah, if staff will just let me know when these contracts are being, uh, being recommendation, recommendations being made, I'll go ahead and call. Obviously the council person whose district the project is in would be, and I'll just go ahead and, we may just mix it up and, and uh, uh, move it through the council, uh, so, but that, I don't have any, any problem with that. I'd like to make that part of the motion. Okay, Anita, can you make that part of the motion as far as uh, the mayor selecting three council people to sit in with staff as to recommendations for engineering and, and design work on federal and state projects? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yes. Just one question on the project. This project is, is including sidewalks, isn't it? It does. Okay. Do we have a we have a motion to second, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Any discussion, council? Council, please vote. And the vote is unanimous. And item three is consideration of contract for janitorial services for City Hall. Our personnel manager, Lynn Henning, asked me to send out bids 
for janitorial services for City Hall. We only have one custodian here and that's not enough for a, a building of this size. We sent out bids. Uh, we started this process actually in 2012 and we're trying to find a company that could clean this building the way it needs to be cleaned. Um, we had, believe it or not, we did have trouble finding people. Um, we put, we did go through probably four companies who came in on a trial basis and either they gave up or we gave them up. So back in April, we uh, issued seal bids again and we received two bids, one from Bob's Janitorial and one from VIP Janitorial. Bob's janitorial withdrew his bid because he made an error in his pricing. VIP janitorial, we put them to work to see how well they would do, and they have done a really good job. So uh, it is our recommendation to award this bid to them. It, it equals out to about $13,455 a year. They'll be working three nights a week four hours per night. Okay. Is this for a year? Mm -hmm. Your contract. Okay. Okay. Is there a motion of <coughs> approval for the contract? So moved. Second. Motion is second. Discussion? Council? Council, please vote. And the vote is unanimous. Okay. Item four is consideration of uh, change orders for the tennis court complex. You have approved several contracts for the tennis court project that is being constructed out north, and as we get into this, we find that we need to make some changes. Um, those changes um, are to three companies. One is to MSB, and it's a total change order of $32,975. Delta Electric is $22,534 and Hart Freeland Roberts is 700, I'm sorry, $575 for a total of $56,084 for all three change orders. And we've got Tom Winbush here, who is our project manager, who can give you an update on the tennis court project and can go over any of these change orders if you have any questions. Let me just, uh, let me just indicate this on any construction project after design is completed and you start getting into the project, you find ways, <clears throat> you find things that you need to add or feel, feel like you should add to make the project complete. In other ways, you find ways that, that you could save money, uh, which was designed in the project. So I fully expect, and we've done, we've done it both ways on this particular project because, as you recall, the initial bids came in um, way too high based on the amount of money we had projected for it. So I fully expect by our next meeting that we'll have a change order. And Tom, you can correct me, uh, in some modifications to the drive going in, that that will be a deduct um, of this contract because we just feel like we found uh, a better way after getting on the site and trying to be efficient and trying to still get a <coughs> quality project completed. Yes. How many change orders have we had so far? Are these the only ones? Or I believe these are the only change orders we have. And we have a $50,000 allowance in there anyway. And through some of the deductions it helped on a change. Thank you. Okay, any other questions from uh, council as far as this particular change order for that project? Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. I have a second. And discussion from council. Council, please vote. And the vote is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sir, did you have a did you have a comment? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I was, I was just curious uh, how, they, how MSB was able to save fifteen thousand eight hundred dollars. I never heard that. How that was accomplished on six items. Uh, so can you can you help in, with that question? Very good. Thank you. This is Mr. Helens, mm -hmm. for those who, yeah. who don't know Morning. him. Say it again. J. 
Jerry Hellams. He has worked with us very closely on the on the construction of the tennis as a volunteer. Yeah, volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> Did you pick up uh, the channel? Yeah, there it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. On the tennis courts, uh, you have that in your packet. It's Peebles Sports Courts. They're removing, and I'll go over all six of those for you, Jerry. And this should have been in your packet right here. Uh, they're removing the slope from footing going out six feet into the courts. They're removing hairpins and rebar around net post. They're changing the rebar and footings to one half inch rebar. They're changing the fence post to four inch corners and three inch line post on all ten foot fencing. They're changing the fence post on four foot fencing to two and a half inches. And they're removing expansion material around all the fence posts, net posts, and light posts. And that is a deduct of fifteen thousand eight hundred dollars. Thank you. Yes. Well, I, I agree with that. That was uh, that was Mr. Peoples. He's building the tennis court. That was his recommendation, yes. and he built Saved literally quite a hundreds of, of them. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. We have, we have a motion. Yeah, we have a motion. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. It was pronounced. Okay. <clears throat> Um, item five is consideration of approval to conduct a special census for the Northwest Annexation Area. Stan? Good morning, Mayor and Council. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We're looking for a good one. Um, you have in your packet the materials uh, that relate to the special census, uh, also the process, but I wanted to give you a a brief synopsis on the process and timeline just so you understand how we got to where we are now. Um, the special census process has been around for years, um, but the current <coughs> regulations that we are bound under in this process, that detect how it's done, have only been in place since 13, uh, 2013. Uh, we started, um, well, we started the road for the Northwest Annexation Area back in 2006. Uh, but it wasn't until May of 2011 that the area was actually annexed. And if you'll remember, the Northwest Annexation Area did not come in in total uh, like we expected. The courts uh, ruled that some areas could not come in and, and remove those, and so we ended up with a partial annexation of the Northwest Annexation Area in May of 2011. Our goal was at the end of the two-year moratorium that was set by the, the court, that we would pursue the annexation of the areas that got left out by the court uh, in May of 11. So we go May 2011, two years, that puts us in May 13. During the time frame between 11 and 13, some other events were happening. The state um, basically eliminated the state planning office, which is the local office that handled certifying special censuses. Um, certification is a requirement in that. We, we go out and do the special census, then a, an agency of the state has to go out and do a sampling of what we've submitted so they can certify that we've done a good job and say that the population is accurate. Uh, so during the period of our moratorium when we were not able to pursue the annexation of these other areas, we were also trying to determine who was going to do the certification because after local planning was, was eliminated, there wasn't an established process for how we would get our special census certified or how they would be done. Those regulations finally came, were published in, uh, in 2013. Um, we also ended our moratorium in, in May of 2013, so we were all gilded up, uh, ready to go on annexing the, the, the balance of the Northwest annexation that we intended to have originally. And the state came in and said, we're going to put a moratorium on all annexations across the state for one year. Uh, so from May of 2013 to, to May of 2014, the moratorium was in place. So we waited that year so that we could go out and do the special census for the entire Northwest annexation area because the regulations also say that you can only do a special census once for an area. So we didn't want to 
go do a piece of it and then come back later and try to do a piece of it. So we waited the year so that we could take in the Northwest Annexation Area and do the special census all as one effort. Well, the state came in in May of 2014 and said, okay, we're, gonna, we're not going to have a moratorium anymore, but we're also not going to allow you to uh, annex by ordinance anymore. So at that point, a decision had to be made, uh, and we decided that we would pursue uh, you know, doing the special census on the Northwest Annexation Area that we do have because there's no uh, you know, guarantee that, that we'll be able to annex those uh, other areas because the only uh, processes available to us now are ordinance by, uh, is annexation by referendum or annexation by request. So uh, we, we don't know that that, that will happen but, um, or when it will happen, so we felt like we need to go ahead and, and do the special census. So based on the process laid out in 13, we submit our letter of intent in de by December. By January 1, we have to have a letter of intent to the state. We have done that. Uh, we now uh, are going to gear up to do the special census. The, the, the city fire department is going to help us do that. We felt like, uh, as in years past, that, that public safety does a good job of doing this for us. They've done it in the past because a uniformed officer coming to a home and knocking on the door wanting information has a little bit more uh, uh, credence to it than, than somebody just in plain clothes that you don't know from Adam. Uh, so uh, we, we just thought it'd be better to handle it like we've done in years past. So they're going to help us with that. Uh, we'll, we have until March 1st to get that special census in. And what that requires is that we have to go to every household and we have to get the information, the first and last name of every person living in that household. Uh, so once we get that information back, uh, we submit it to Southwest. Southwest is now the agency that does the certification. They will do a sampling, 10% sampling of our information, and then they will pass their findings on to the state. And then by July 1, the report comes out that states the certified population for the cities so that they can use that certified population for the new run of state share taxes that comes for that next year. So that's our timeline and that's our process. And I'll be happy to answer any other questions that you might have. Any questions from council? I think the, the only thing I could add is I'd ask Al to kind of look at our state share revenue that the state shares with local governments. And <clears throat> the best number that we could come up with, maybe a little more or less, is roughly a quarter million dollars a year. We've got, what, five more years left for the next census, so that could be, a, you know, $1.25 uh, million dollars over, over that period of time. Not a great deal of money, but uh, I think it's certainly worth going after. Move for approval on the annexation, and census for the annexation. So I have a motion to second. Any discussion? Uh, when you say the fire department is going to help, now, Will this be overtime for them? Or are you actually going to take them away from their responsibilities and train them to do this? Well, Chief Stewart is here and he is meeting with his battalion captains, I think, this week and, and meeting with Stan. Stan will go over that process. It's certainly our our hope that uh, that we can do it with uh, with staff at that time. They will still be in pretty much localized to one area and, and the station there will still have equipment within that same area on, on any call. But I guess the best I could tell you is we're just gonna play it, you know, play it by ear and see how it goes on a day to day basis without weakening the, the efforts of the fire department in them doing their job. Yeah, and our goal is to, you know, use city personnel and, and we hope to use the fire department and then, you know, if we have need some additional help we can always call upon others to help us but uh, we just feel like it's better for someone in a, in a position of a, uh, uniform and authority to go to someone's house especially these days when people are somewhat leery about strangers okay any other uh, any other questions or council? we have a motion a second mm -hmm. council please vote And the motion passes with uh, seven members in favor and two abstaining. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, on the board appointments, we have the Mayor's Advisory Council on Domestic and Sexual Violence, reappointment, three-year term. 
Kathy Blount, Roger Wright, Jensie Spradlin, Monique Merriweather, Jane Jarvis, Vicki Foote, and Sean Brown. So moved. Have a motion. Do a second? Second. Second. Discussion? Council, please vote. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, Council, we have, we, have, uh, we have someone. Come on up, sir. My name is Nassana Gaspar. I reside here in Jackson. My question is related to uh, appointments of um, and establishment of such councils. Uh, I'm the father of Sinkyu Jaspor, who was uh, executed by Jackson, Tennessee Police on November 6th of last year. And uh, to date, we still have nothing forthcoming from your police department or the city. Uh, my concern is uh, about uh, the need for independent uh, community agencies such as this, where we can uh, get uh, some, some action initiated, some more trustworthy action initiated in these cases where you have lethal force and a question of excessive force by police. Uh, this is something that I think should be independent and it should have members appointed uh, who have suffered uh, from, uh, um, have been the victims of that kind of lethal force or excessive force by police. Uh, just as we do, in, you, you're doing here in this case, I think that should be done here. Uh, we are more than about 10 weeks out, and we have heard nothing from your police department in terms of report uh, or investigation. Uh, and it appears to be an ongoing cover-up. And if we have these type of uh, agencies that can uh, speak to this on behalf of the community, speak to the leadership, um, I think it will <coughs> assure that we have action and more accountability in these kinds of cases. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, Captain Corley, you have Major Corley. You have any any update that you can share? I know I know we've got a lot going on in, in reference to that case, and I don't want to. Sir, that, that's still ongoing. Okay. Investigation is obviously looks like things are sensitive, and you okay. know, understand. Understand. Well, I, I think on, on behalf of council and everyone that that we're all waiting with anticipation for that report to get in. But thank you, sir, for your Excuse me, Mayor, I have a question, if sure. I may. Sir, are you talking about a citizen review board? What, what, it, 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 specifically, it what are you talking about? It would be something in that nature, yes. Yeah. I think it is uh, specifically, I mean, exactly how mm -hmm. it's set up. I think there's some, some things in particular that I think are different from what you typically see uh, in order to assure mm -hmm. a, a little more accountability, a little more, uh, I think, uh, uh, trust mm -hmm. on behalf of, of the public. That's one reason why I mentioned uh, members who uh, have been victims of, of that kind of uh, uh, lethal force, mm -hmm. and, and those should probably be the majority of them on, on such a mm -hmm. So something in that respect. Mr. Corley. Major. Major Corley. That's Major Corley. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, do, we have a, do we have any type of citizen review board? Uh, we do have a... Uh, <coughs> I'm just kind of separating yeah. the particular case, but just in general, yes. we, we do have a citizen's we review. Have, well, we, we have a process that involves a uh, review of, from a supervisory capacity, also a force instructor and use of force personnel within the department and civilians are involved. Thank you. Okay. And, that, and that would be different from what I'm getting at now. Okay. Okay. Well, we, we have, have we voted on this? Yeah, I think we have we have already voted. voted on. Have we not? Okay, we I, th I think <laughs> what what the gentleman is saying is he he wants some answers. Yeah, and I uh, and uh, I agree with him. And, and I think we agenda, need them, but, but I think TBI and the you know, police department is still working on it. Is that basically what you're saying? You waiting on the findings? Is that basically what you're requesting? I think that, yeah, yeah, I thought that was you basically saying, okay. Well, yeah, obviously that review is under under the uh, TBI, and as soon as 
hopefully we hear something from them. We'll, we're certainly going to share it because I think we all, all want to move on on this. Um, okay, we voted on the on the board appointments. Yes. Um, no, sir, we did. We have not. We did, have not. Mm -hmm. Did I have mentioned the name of Judge Hugh Harvey? I may have eliminated his name from that. I think you stopped at two or three. I think I went down through Sean Brown and sure didn't go down to the second one of Judge Hugh Harvey. Do you all see the names there? Yes, Is there a motion yes. for approval of these right. appointments? Have a motion. So moved. Have a motion. Second. And second. Discussion from council. Council, please vote. And the vote is unanimous. Okay, item seven is uh, our budget amendments. Ms. Karen. Good morning. We have one budget amendment this month, and this is for the capital for the police law enforcement building in the amount of $45,535. This is to have a, a chiller replaced at the police department. Total cost is $70,535, but they're going to pull $25,000 from a line item that's currently budgeted, the training lab that they won't use. So the addition and draw on fund balance be $45,535. So moved. Okay, we have a motion. Second. Discussion from council. Council, please vote. And the vote is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Adam made is consideration of invoices over ten thousand dollars. So moved. Second. We have, have a motion. The second uh, discussion. Council, please vote. And the motion passes with eight members in favor and one voting no. There being no more business, the meeting is adjourned. <laughs>